Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming along today. My name is uh, Piers Dudley. I work for BA Systems, as you just heard. Uh, a little bit about my background to begin with then. So uh, I was in the Royal Air Force. I served 12 years before leaving. I flew uh, the Eurofighter. I uh, joined the company last year uh, and now I've got a role within uh, BA Systems. So here you can see behind us, uh, we've got two Eurofighters that we've brought along here. We've got the single seat variant, as you can see, and then we've got the uh, two seat uh, variant there. A little bit about Eurofighter to uh, begin with then. So in terms of its capability, you already heard Steve talking about its uh, ability for carefree handling. It's agile. It's got two powerful EJ200 engines at the back. It's also got a, a world-class defensive aid suite, a onboard uh, communication suite, again, which is world-class, and it can carry a wide range of weapons on this aircraft. It's worth noting as well, those weapons that it can carry because of the uh, the amount of weapons it can carry means that you don't necessarily need to change the weapons every time. Each weapon can potentially be used uh, for the same weapon, apologies, can be used for a uh, different mission set. So as you already heard, the Eurofighter currently is operating uh, across the world. So it's operating on Quick Reaction Alert, QRA, 24-7-365 days a year, down in the Falkland Islands, currently in the UK and as well it has been operating doing Baltic air policing. Along with that it's operated in the Middle East as you heard Steve say earlier and as far as the Far East uh, these aircraft have been to. Eurofighter itself then, so in terms I'm going to talk you through today a bit of a QRA scramble just to uh, highlight its reliability that it's got. So it's, as I said, men and with women currently are operating two three, six, five days a year, 24, seven. They're on a high readiness state. The moment the buzzer goes, the air crew will run to the aircraft and due to its high reliability, the aircraft can get airborne within a few minutes. Using its powerful EJ200 engines, it can get to its height and supersonic speeds within a matter of minutes. Using its onboard sensors, its world-class onboard sensors, it can detect its targets, find its targets, and intercept them using minimal GCI as required. It's, if it is required any GCI, the onboard communication suite that it's got means that there is reliable feedback to the pilot as required. Again, the aircraft can then intercept any aircraft it needs to, whether that's a high level or low level using its sensors and it can then remain on station as required. Once the task is complete or we have been stood down by uh, air traffic, it will be, we then land and again due to the high reliability of the aircraft it means that the aircraft can be turned very quickly and can therefore be ready again to be on station as necessary able to defend its skies whether that's in the... Very quickly, how many minutes for air to air Say that again, sorry. What's your term or turnaround time for air to air missions, refueling and armies? Uh, the turnaround time is within the uh, stated uh, NATO requirements. So, uh, so the turnaround time. So it, it can be back on state in a matter of minutes. We can't give away the, the exact times because that's within the, the contract in negotiations. As it's been stated, it's employed by and trusted by all of the countries that operate it to perform this task. So, in a matter of minutes, you can also do hot refueling. So, literally land, plug in to refuel, and go again if necessary. But of course, obviously, normally using air to air refueling to extend the mission But rapid turnaround, not just of the aircraft, but the mission data. So, the mission data is ready to go for that next mission as well. Yeah, which would be a uh, point that I like. Exactly right, and um, thank you. And uh, as I said, then so the aircraft can be back on station, uh, defending the skies, whether or not that's in the UK, whether or not that's on a uh, 
overseas deployment, like I said, the Baltic air policing, or in the Falklands as well. It's worth noting the current fit you can see here then, so we've got a pod underneath, we've got two tanks, and we can see we've just got some uh, dummy missiles uh, on the end there. That's a quick introduction capability brief to the Typhoon. Uh, I'm ready to take any questions that you may have. Can you repeat two? You have two fuel tanks, two FA missiles? Uh, eight of them on the outboard, which is also and in the middle. Uh, the fuel tank the pod. Okay. Underneath it. So on, on this aircraft is the Lightning 5 uh, uh, targeting pod, and on the single seat aircraft is the Lightning 3 targeting pod. Uh, are you using the brake parachute while landing here? Uh, I believe they didn't use it on landing here uh, because we didn't necessarily need to, but we do obviously have that capability if required. But if you land on a highway strips, are you using that? You are not testing that here, but anyway. Correct, we're not testing that here. That's something, uh, to be honest, we need to uh, investigate further. So I couldn't, I couldn't give you a official answer on that, apologies. But how soon you can change the parachute or, or take another takeoff? It's a quick process. It's a quick process. It's a simple, uh, once the parachute's out the back, they simply just, uh, it's a unclip, put a new one in, and then you're off, off again. Okay, thank you. Seconds. Yeah, seconds. <laughs> Push, pushed in, pushed back on, done. It's really quick. <laughs>